I have a strong love-hate relationship with War Thunder. It's so good and so bad at the same time it definitely hurts. Here's why you should play and stay away from it at the same time. War Thunder Oh how do I love you and how do I hate you? It's a game loaded with tons of fun and even more lost potential. Its free to play model lets it thrive and suffer at the same time. The same goes for the devs vehicles first philosophy. But let's be fair and since we're nice people, let's start with the things it does so damn well. War Thunder is in a good spot even with all of its flaws since there isn't any notable competition. Sure, there's worlds of tanks if you just compare the arcade battles. But there's no vehicle based combined arms game out there able to compete. Especially once you visit the realistic battle modes. The flight model and tank controls are just realistic enough to keep a good distance to casual or arcade games. But they are still simple enough not to overwhelm most people. Still, the flight model is sophisticated enough to even keep sim players engaged for a while. I love being able to play a few rounds of War Thunder spontaneously because I don't need a joystick or throttle unit attached to my rig. I can play two games of War Thunder in the time it would take me to get into the air in a real sim. Yet it still is challenging and offers a ridiculous amount of vehicles to experiment with, which I would say is the game's strongest point. There are over 800 at the moment, and most of the planes, ships and tanks available retain at least their basic characteristics. Just to name a few examples. The P-47 handles like the heavy pig she is, but conserves energy very well. Most Spitfires are nimble and turn on a dime, but can compete in terms of energy retention. With its small silhouette and powerful gun, the Jagdpanzer IV is the nightmare of any long-range engagement on open terrain. The T-34 heavy tank isn't the most mobile thing in the world, but it can take a lot of damage and still remain operational, while nuking everything it sees with its insane 120mm main gun. On top of these well-known vehicles, War Thunder offers a mixture of weird and exotic stuff you don't get to see often in games. Like the Soviet Su-100Y, a naval derp cannon bolted onto a big box of steel. Moves like a dead brick, but delivers over 2 kilograms of explosive mass over long range to everyone interested. Then there's the heavily armored German Brumbeer. Besides its funny name, which roughly translates into growly bear, it carries a 15 cm gun. The fun ends once it shoots your tank and 5 kilograms of explosives detonate inside the crew compartment. There also are lots of prototypes available, like the American XA-38 Grizzly. It's like the grandpa of the modern A-10 and carries a 75mm gun mounted in the nose. Two prototypes were built, one was scrapped after the war, while the other one's whereabouts remain unknown. And finally there's fictional stuff like the Panther 2, which, how it's displayed in the game, is a weird combination of various German design proposals. They all were concepts or at least mock-ups in some way, but there never was a functional prototype. The realistic battle mode is a lot about ballistics and proper positioning depending on the type and mobility of your vehicle. And sometimes you just need good nerves plus a little bit of luck. On top of all that you can customize the shit out of everything there are lots of skins, bushes to place on tanks, decals, whatever. The game also looks very good, especially with the new particle effects recently added. The damage system is very interesting as it simulates armor types and slopes to a certain degree, which leads to many possible outcomes of various engagements. You need to know your enemy very well or fail miserably. Therefore, you also need to be kind of resistant to frustration, because especially in the first, let's say, 100 hours, you'll be sometimes shot to pieces from all directions without really understanding why and how things went to hell this fast. On second thought, I just lied to you. This phenomenon will accompany you through all of your War Thunder career. Better attend some rage control classes before even creating your account. So what's not to like about all this? It, as so often, is to focus on the free-to-play model and monetization instead of putting the game first. First of all, everything takes ages to achieve without a premium account, which is ridiculously overpriced compared to what you get, which is just reduced grind. Well, okay, people who think dumping 4000 hours of your life into a single video game is perfectly fine from a social point of view might not share my opinion. 
Truth is, without paying you won't get all these shiny vehicles you want before the sun turns cold because you need to research every single one. You earn research points by blowing up other people and doing objectives. But at roughly 20% of advancement through a tech tree, things slow down to a glacial pace. Not only will your vehicle research progress sluggishly after hitting higher tiers, at some point you won't be able to repair them anymore. That's because if you lose your vehicle, you need to pay for repairs. The currency for repairs and other stuff is called Silver Alliance. And guess what? Without a premium account, you earn a lot less for your actions. So you might even lose some after a match, which ultimately leads to the inability to buy a new vehicle even if you researched it. But let's say you could afford it. This doesn't mean you can just jump right into a game and have fun. You first need to spade it, which means more work. Most vehicles in War Thunder suffer from the so-called stock syndrome. This means it's in bad shape and you have to spend some more research points into repairing tracks, fixing engines, adding extra armor and so on. It also doesn't have access to all kinds of ammunition, which is bad if your standard round already struggles with medium armor. Without a premium account this, again, takes ages and you might even be unable to progress if you're not an outstanding player. So you need to buy premium time in order to stay sane. Or you're so fat you cause time dilation around you, then time itself obviously doesn't matter to you and so does the eternal grind. Disclaimer: I don't have a problem with paying for free to play games. I just think it's the wrong scope here. But let's continue. Besides torturing people into buying premium time, Gaijin, which are the developers, found another way to earn money. Premium vehicles. You can buy them through their online shop or within the game for golden eagles. Golden eagles are the virtual currency you need to buy with your real money. As the game was released, these premium vehicles were rather affordable. Buying one supports the devs and while driving or flying them you gain enhanced rewards, which makes the grind more bearable. Especially if you're running a premium account in the first place. But things got out of hand quite quickly and prices spiked. Today they try to sell single vehicles for $60. That's $10 above the price point of Belzim Tech's UE helicopter for DCS, which is light years beyond anything War Thunder offers in terms of modeling and simulation complexity. But some people seem to buy them. So in conclusion, Gaijin focuses on creating more vehicles instead of improving the main game. So we're stuck with playing the same game modes over and over for years now without any change in sight. But the vehicle spam came with even worse consequences. Battle rank compression. What's that? Each tank or plane or ship in War Thunder comes with a certain battle rank. This rates its combat effectiveness. Matchmaking is based on these ranks, so you don't get matched against a T-80 while cruising around in your Neubaufahrzeug. The problem is that for the sake of matchmaking, Ranks up to one above and below you are thrown together into one match. And with more and more vehicles crowding the ranks, there just isn't enough room anymore to appropriately rate them. So as a result you sometimes end up in a 4.0 match with your 5.0 M4A3 E2 Sherman, which ends in you just clubbing everyone because they can do close to nothing against your armor, which isn't a lot of fun after a while. Or if you're on the receiving end. Feeling good in your new Tiger E at 5.7? Well, have fun getting wrecked by the 6.7 T34 from before. It even gets worse on higher battle ranks. So you might face a T54 with your Tiger 2. It's not just a lot more mobile than you are, but it also can penetrate your armor on almost any range from every direction. The community calls for battle rank decompression for a long time now. And almost nothing happened. Because matchmaking. It would take too long then, said Gaijin, which would make the game less attractive. Well then, go and find more players willing to play the game. But that's not going to happen without fixing the points I mentioned. At the moment they chase players away with idiotic pricing, branded grind and partially broken matchmaking because of the aforementioned battle rank compression. Sadly, as we all know, that's not likely to change in the near future. So if you want to join the War Thunder community, you just probably have to live with these issues. And if you choose to play the game, then take this advice. Only buy premium time when it's on sale. To be frank, don't buy anything for full price. Wait for sales, every single time. Or just don't buy anything at all and enjoy the lower tiers. That's where most of the fun is located anyways. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, then consider to like, comment and subscribe. If you already play War Thunder or you're interested in playing but you never got started, I'd be curious to hear your opinion on the matter. Thanks for watching and see you next time.